Welcome back to the um, monthly multiple update, but we're going for a quarterly update this time to get us caught up to October. And I'm, I'm very happy to announce that uh, when we start the October, um, or maybe even part of this um, quarterly update, I will have a partner. Uh, the honorary professor Pat Brown will be um, <laughs> bringing a different perspective to the monthly multiple update. So um, I am very excited to be getting back on track. And uh, so yeah, let's take a look at the July numbers really quickly. We had 110 uh, approved and published classifications for the month of July. And I think everybody knows we had one <laughs> witness fall. Anybody remember what that is? It was Cranfield, <laughs> the first US fall in almost four years. So we'll talk a little bit more about that one later. So um, for July, we had um, a total of uh, 43 different classification types out of the 110 meteorites that were approved. First, we're going to look at the chondrites that were approved. So we have the uh, carbonaceous chondrites. Um, out of those, there wasn't anything, um, you know, too rare, but the C3 um, group of meteorites, uh, the C3, I believe is ungrouped. Those are, um, there's not a huge amount of those. Um, the rumor rudies are plentiful. Um, but um, with the L, um, the L and the L chondrites, uh, we have some rare ones in there. We have uh, there's only ten L sevens, so that was the one that was um, approved in July was the tenth one, and even more rare um, is the LL five melt brescia classification, and that one was the fourth uh, class fourth meteorite classified as that uh, type. So pretty cool. Uh, the H's. You know, there's some slightly rare, but most of those are, uh, you know, pretty common. Uh, the H3-5, there are, I believe, over 100 of those. So uh, not as many as the other Hs, but um, still not as rare as the other ones. We have uh, the uh, HED meteorites. And with the HEDs, um, we had uh, the uh, anomalous Eucrites. I think there were only about uh, that was the 15th one. And then uh, we also had the um, fifth diagenite melt brescia. And since July, there has been a sixth one, I believe, classified. But the fifth one, um, I believe, was a Mark Lyons classification, I think. And it was um, the largest um, diagenite melt brescia to date. And um, the most rare classification that we had in July was the lunar uh, chocolate uh, melt rock. And that was only the second one. Um, the first one was classified in 2019, I believe. So yeah, some uh, a good uh, variety and a wide array of different classifications there. Only three continents on the list this time, but that's uh, not unusual. Uh, but it is nice to see uh, North America and the United States on there. So, uh, and Cranfield definitely was the star of uh, July, I, in my opinion. <laughs> so, um, we have the um, smallest total known weight meteorite for July. And uh, I am sorry if I'm running through these quickly, but uh, this is a quarterly update. So, we're going to get caught up and then we can go into more detail on the next uh, monthly update. But yeah, only 11.4 grams, not the smallest one we've ever seen, <laughs> but uh, still pretty small. And the largest total known weight meteorite for July was NWA 15155. And that was over 48 kilograms. Uh, it's a Eucrite uh, monomit that was uh, found in Morocco that was uh, approved in July. Usually I feature a few different meteorites uh, for the month, but since we are trying to get uh, caught up to date, I'm just going to talk about Cranfield because that one was pretty special and it was really awesome to follow it. This was kind of the first fall that I followed personally um, that I like knew people that were, you know, in all the pictures and the different video clips I saw. And I thought that was pretty exciting. So on this um, slide here, I have the um, United States falls listed for the last 10 years. And as you can see, the last one was uh, Hamburg um, and that was back in 2018. So this was a pretty big deal. And even a bigger deal if you realize, you know, you think about the fact that there's been, there have been two more um, United States falls since then. So kind of unprecedented. I feel like the hunters have been really busy with lots of travel lately. Officially, the H3-5 is not the most rare classification that we've had in the last 10 years. 
Um, the one that literally has the least amount of um, meteorites classified under it is the, uh, the C one, the, the one that uh, is for Sutter's Mill. But I don't think that we um, classify uh, meteorites just simply as carbonaceous anymore. So not definitely a, you know, not necessarily a fair assessment. Um, so I say Cranfield still is the, the most rare of the classifications that we've had in the last 10 years. Like I said, it's a it was a really significant event. Um, and Mississippi, they both, they haven't had many meteorites before. They only had four classifications up until Cranfield. So um, yeah, that makes their fifth and um, it was their third witness fall. And yes, their first H chondrite uh, classification. But you know, I'm not gonna go too much into detail, like I said, because we're trying to get caught up. And uh, a person on our crew kind of uh, summarized all of the, the, all the details around the Cranfield fall already. And that was Mike Kelly. He wrote a great article uh, that was featured in the Meteorite Times. You can see the title there and the date. Um, and I have a link at the bottom if you wanna go check it out. Um, the way that he has the article listed out, it's just kind of, um, you know, he talks about the fall, but then um, like the second half of the article, he uh, features, um, you know, the finds of the different specimens in order and has like a little, you know, paragraph about each one about the hunter and just, you know, what they found. And it was a really neat read. Um, and yeah, so check it out uh, if you want to learn more about the Cranfield fall. So that was the update. Like I said, we're doing three all together. So that was the update for uh, July. And we will continue with the August and September sometime uh, in the next week, either Saturday or next Wednesday, and hopefully get that all wrapped up in um, the next session. So thank you guys. And let me know if you have any questions. Awesome. Cool. Excellent Ooh. job, Sue. Yeah. Really nice. That was Good nice. Job, Sue. Thanks. Thanks. Way to go. Thank nice Great job. job. So I'm way behind on the Met Bowl updates and um, pleasantly surprised um, that people have been asking for um, updates on it and when I'm gonna be getting back to these. So um, I am going to, my goal is to be doing these live because when I've left my own devices to record them myself, um, they take forever because I will re-record over and over because I will find something wrong with <laughs> every single clip I do. I'm like, oh, my lipstick looks bad. Oh, I need to change my hair. Oh, and I'm like, you know, Topher, just record me live and don't show me the video. That's how I'm going to do it. So, um, and I've also asked for help. So um, maybe not tonight, but Pat will be joining me on some of these um, and giving a different perspective. Um, the perspective of like, um, he's going to be looking more at the petrography and like the, the chemical composition, all the stuff that I don't really look at. I look at the more human interest or just the numbers and stuff. So hopefully that will make it more dynamic and I don't know, more well-rounded of an update. So um, I'm going to record the update for July tonight and then either next Wednesday or this Saturday, I will um, double up and do August, September. And we're going to send out one video with a quarterly update so we can be caught up and Pat and I can start our new way of doing things um, for October here in a few weeks. I'm so proud of you, baby. You did a great job.